Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's good to be home. We uh, can't speak for Sherry, but I missed you. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so I'll tell you, when you're used to coming to church, you know, multiple times a week, and all of a sudden it's taken away from you, even though you did it voluntarily, you know, we did get some, uh, well, <coughs> try to get some rest, but anyway, um, the, uh, you miss, you, you miss it, you miss the fellowship, you miss coming together and worshiping the Lord and the Spirit and the truth, and uh, you miss your family, and that's what the church of God really is, it's a family, and, uh, but it's good to be back home, and uh, we, uh, we missed you dearly. It's good to have Brother Patrick here this morning. <clears throat> and uh, Sister Karen visiting with us this morning. It's good to have both of you here. Uh, you keep us uh, sharing and uh, uh, say I'm waiting. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but keep them in your prayers. They're on their way back from uh, Branson. They went there for a few days to go watch it. Uh, what do you call it? Esther or something like that. Yeah. And uh, but it, but it is good to be back home. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Did you come to worship the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray, Father. Glory to you. We are just gathered together. We are so thankful that we can assemble in the name of Jesus to worship thee. Lord, we are, we are so thankful and grateful that we are your children. We are thy sons and daughters bought with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we just ask for the Holy Spirit to come, for the Holy Spirit to take charge, to have for the Holy Spirit to take complete control as your will is, Father, this morning. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's saints said, Amen. 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 I want to worship the Lord this morning. Let's stand to our feet and sing. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross,
One pair of hands on the valleys, the ocean, the river, and the sand. And those hands are so strong when life goes wrong. Put your faith into one pair of hands. One pair of hands, you'll see. Important. 
on how to live for God. But if you came with a burden, maybe this morning, maybe a little bit of angst in your heart, whether you're here in the sanctuary at home, this message is for you. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I got to read that again. The Holy Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Ooh, aren't you thankful for that? And the children, then we're heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered. Say that with me. Shall be delivered. From the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption in wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? That if we hope for that we, we see not, <clears throat> do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us, Lord to God, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Last verse, church. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture. If you've got any fear, tribulation, trepidation in your heart, within your family, whatever is going on, you focus on these verses Today, let the Holy Spirit bring comfort to your heart and to your mind. And I want to use for a subject, shall be delivered. Shall be, not maybe, not I'll think about your deliverance. Well, maybe I'll get around to your deliverance. The Word of God clearly tells us, shall be delivered. He's talking about, the Holy Ghost is talking about all of creation being delivered. Heavenly Father, we love you. Oh, Father, we just thank you again for your Holy Spirit. Oh, it is such peace. It is such joy. And Lord, we ask for the Spirit, the real teacher and the preacher to come and get me out of the way. Lord, that we all in the sanctuary and those wherever in the world they may be that are watching, Lord, that our hearts are surrendered to the cross of Christ this morning. We ask all these things in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. amen. Shall be delivered. <clears throat> I, um, you know, I have to forgive me a little bit. I'm going to have to try to stay corralled. 
I tried to kick something, I messed my toe up. No, I, I didn't kick nothing. I don't know what happened, but uh, I, I'm in severe pain this morning. But God will see us through. As I stated at the outset, it's so good to be home. And, you know, we had a good time. Some people had a good time. No, I did too. <clears throat> but I'm a homebody. Full disclosure, don't want to go nowhere. <clears throat> Just keep me within a couple parishes and I'm happy camping. <clears throat> but that don't work sometimes for all. So we went somewhere where we'd never been up to eastern Tennessee to the Smoky Mountains. And specifically the Pigeon Forge Gatlinburg area. And it is absolutely beautiful. Those of you that have been there, it is just beautiful. And most people, and I was too, uh, they are impressed by the architecture, <clears throat> the old time buildings of Gatlinburg, the the bright lights of, of, of Pigeon Forge and all the amusement rides and you got Dollywood and all that man-made junk. <clears throat> you know, and we got boutiques, stores, all bling bling and baubles and whatever you want to call them. And all that's fine. You got people like dance just going back and forth <clears throat> both sides. But what I enjoyed, Brother Fletcher, was the hand of God. When I started observing the Smoky Mountains, they were just absolutely beautiful. The eastern part of Law, Tennessee, is pretty. Well, one area is not, but I won't say where <coughs> that I've been. But up there in eastern Tennessee, boy, that's God's country. It is beautiful. And I got to thinking, <coughs> as I was observing people, I do that. Because I guess when you when you're a pastor, one of the things, bless you, one of the things that bless you, that that the Lord places a burden on your heart is for lost souls. <clears throat> and I am seeing, <clears throat> I exaggerate not now, especially the first two days, thousands of people, just thousands and thousands and thousands. I don't know how many were there, a hundred thousand in Gatlinburg, maybe more, man. But I'm watching just like ants going up. The town <clears throat> is it is booked in, if you will, mountains on both sides. And you start at the bottom naturally of the main road going into Gatlinburg, and you just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. <clears throat> and I noticed something which is normal. This, this is not rocket science. The people going downhill were getting it. The people coming uphill, not so much. There was a laboring going on, especially the ones that you could tell were maybe not in the best shape. The ones are that walk a long distance. They're going up, up, up. And I'm telling you, the more they walk, the more they slump over because you're going. And I started to observe that these people, and, 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 and again, I'm a people watcher at times, and I'm praying at the same time, quite a few times. Lord, save them. I'll never meet them again. The Lord, save them. I'll just see somebody, the Lord, save them. I don't know what they're going through, but you do. I don't know what their background is, you do. And I met some wonderful people up there. But the, the thing about it was, I wanted to come home. I didn't want to leave. Because home is where my heart's at. And home with Him is where your heart will be. Amen. The Bible says to love the things of this world, the love of the Father is not in you. And you hear me? That doesn't mean God didn't say you can't go enjoy the boutiques and the shops and the, the man-made architecture of Gatlinburg. He didn't say that. 
But to be in love with this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Meaning the ways of the world. Meaning that you are distracted. We are looking to something else to satisfy a void. But I have observed people over the years, starting with this fellow right here. And that song that you let us in <clears throat> about that it's different now. It's different now. Because you are what? A child of God. But there are many today out there that are not children of God or call yourselves children of God. And there's two things that I have observed over the years as I've managed a lot of people <clears throat> way back when in the day. When you or I, humanity, we must remember this. You were created to have relationship and fellowship with God. I hope we understand that. You weren't created to go out here and be a great movie star. You might be one. You might be a great football player. You might be the most talented, handsomest, whatever, on the face of this earth. But if you don't know Jesus, you're going to split hell wide open just like anyone else that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's right. <clears throat> Sometimes we read these verses and we think, when it says creation groans, it said all creation groans. Can I get an amen? amen. The Word of God tells us that. Now, we're going to dig a little deeper here. Let me get a little analytical. I'll try not to bore you. This is a commentary. It's got different uh, theologians, if you will, wrapped up in Swaggart's, Brother Swaggart's commentary on the book of Romans. First off, I want to make sure we understand what groan and travail really mean. Groaneth in the Greek is sustenazo. It means to experience a common calamity, which in this case refers to the fall of Adam. When Adam fell, you and I fell, and all of God's creation whether it be animate or inanimate creatures, fell. Travaileth in the Greek is son odino. It means pangs in company with or simultaneously. However, travaileth is different than groaneth in that travail carries with it an expectation of relief from suffering. So you hear about women that are expected mothers and one of the words will say she's travailing, she's about to give birth but she's got the expectation it's going to come out alright, this pain is not going to be forever, so there's your two differences church even though this does speak of the entirety of creation and is readily understandable concerning the inanimate creation and as well of believers who truly know the Lord and are cognizant of the reason for man's present difficulties. However, it does not explain the unsaved of humanity who make up the far, far majority. One might argue that the word together does not include the unsaved. Oh, but yes, it does. All creation whole creation. The unsaved groaneth just like we do, the believers, except for entirely different reasons. The believer groans because we know the cause of so much suffering, and that is sin. And as well, the only difference or the, excuse me, the only deliverance is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only deliverance, church. 
is his coming. The unbeliever, the groans under the weight of rebellion against God and the misery it brings, but never quite knowing the reason why. They're hurting too, church. And that's what I was thinking about when I was looking at so many people, how many are having a groan, which they we all groan, and I'll get more into that in a minute. They don't know the Lord. And I'm going to come to this now. I told you a few minutes ago. There's two things. Two major things that unbelievers will do to fill an empty void or try to fill an empty void. Number one, they will go out into this world and get their hands on things that will alter their mind. Come on. Amen. In other words, to create an illusion away from that void. That it's a substitute void filler, if you will, even though it's temporary. We have an epidemic in this nation right now of something called crystal meth. Sherry and I sometimes will watch on Friday and Saturday night this show called On Patrol Live. It's live. This nation is flooded with crystal meth. It is bad, church. I had to terminate when I was an employer. I don't know how many men for that same drug. It must be powerfully addictive, but all of them are in one way or another. So that's one way. If I'm in rebellion of God, from God, I should have a relationship with Him, but I don't care how much money they got, I don't care their status in life, they're, they are lonely. There is something missing. So the second thing, what are they going to do? This is huge. There's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You're going to fill your time with something. Every one of us is going to fill your time with something. It could be hobbies. It could be career. It could be shopping. It could be whatever. You're going to find something to fill your time. And people that are not saved, they're not born again, they, they pour their whole life into something to try to fill that void. Again, it could be their career. I knew a lot of men in business, and they were not saved. And man, they worked 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And so did I when I was unsaved, when I was a plant manager. Because I was running. And try to put yourself in your mind and in your position that, hey, I'm doing the right thing. I'm taking care of number one. I'm taking care of me and my family. I'm a pretty good guy. And I'm a hard worker. And we believe in hard work. The Bible is very clear about that. But when that's your whole life, what happens when you don't have that job no more? Or people will put all their time in hobbies. You heard me say it, I don't know how many times, don't say it again. It's not a sin to raise horses. Now we have some horse lovers in here. It's not a sin to go fishing. Peter, James, and John, and a bunch of them were fishing Landry. Weren't they fishermen? No. It's not a sin to go hunting. But I'm going to tell you, if you let a hobby interfere with your walk with God, you've got problems. Amen. Amen. And so many today, they're good old boys. They work hard. They will work hard. Oh, but when it's playtime, don't mess with me. I'm going to the woods, or I'm going to the river, or I'm going to the lake. Anything to fill that void of no 
relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I get it? Amen. Amen. Oh, see, church, just like the commentary pointed out, they're groaning. But their groan is different than ours. They're groaning because there's an absence of true godly peace within their heart and in their life. Amen. You and I are groaning because they don't have it. They're groaning. Hear me now. They're groaning because they don't have it. They don't realize it. You're groaning whether you realize it or not because they don't have it. You see, the child of God, the most important thing is souls. Amen. Eternal souls. And this groan is getting worse. You pointed it out. <clears throat> what you preached on last Sunday. Thank you, by the way. Church, that travailing and that groaning, as you get closer to the Lord, it's going to increase. It's not going to decrease. But the peace that passes all understanding will increase. In other words, the Lord lays the burden on you and I to be intercessors as He did me when I'm up there in ten buck two, don't know anybody, but I'm like, Lord, save that person. Maybe. I should have said it aloud. They'd probably throw me out. But, <laughs> but I did it quietly. Her and Brandon went up that tune and lived up on that mountain. Uh-uh. Not this guy. I've, I've seen cables break. Uh, <clears throat> I'll stay on the ground. But they gave me time, several hours, to walk around and, you know, I got hobbies. I like antique cars. So I went to an antique car museum and walked around and visited with some people. And, Who are you? Where are you come? I'm, I'm a pastor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Lord save him. Yeah. That's the business. I heard a movie one time. This is the business we've chosen. Well, this is the business you've chosen to be a, a, a soldier in the army of God. And the great high sheriff of heaven says what's important, what gets me stirred up, what makes heaven jump for joy, the angels singing loud, is one sinner who repents. Amen. That's what the Word of God tells me. And this travailing and groaning. <clears throat> I'm going to say it again. Is going to get worse as we draw closer. The church, we take great comfort in the Holy Spirit clearly telling us here that He bears witness that you and I, all those that have been washed in the blood, there's power in the blood, that we are the sons and daughters of God. Can I get an amen? amen. There's your peace. There's your joy. There's where your cup is overflowing and now you can drink from your saucer and you can do it daily in spite of the daily trials and tribulations that you go through. They're real. I'm not going to say they're not. The Bible just says it. Sufferings. Sufferings. This world is suffering for another reason because they don't know God. There are times that God is going to put that burden on you. I know as a pastor several times I've had a burden on my heart for some of you in this church and some of you that are watching on social media. But it's the greatest burden in the world. It is knowing that the Lord is using you and I as a tool that we receive a blessing and we can be a blessing to others. Our God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Why pray if He doesn't? Amen. And when God lays something on your heart, don't wait. Don't procrastinate. Go to Him. Lord, I don't know why, but you do. You see, the Bible says we don't know how to pray as we ought. We just read it together. There are going to be things in this life 
that happened to you or around someone you love or there's an impression given to you, you know it's from God because it's good. It's not evil. It's in, You'll know it every time when it's about an eternal soul. You'll know that's the Holy Spirit giving you the option to be an intercessor. You'll know it. You'll have peace. Peace because, again, what matters is their groaning that don't know the Lord. You do. Your groan is in that burden that God has given His church. Hallelujah. It is a finished work, the blood of Jesus of Calvary. He has equipped and furnished us, the Bible says, with everything we need for life and living. In other words, God is not going to put more on you than you can bear. At times, I have felt that way. I'm sure you have too. Many times I wanted to pull my hair out. I didn't know what to do in the carnal. But the Bible says when I am weak, then I'm strong because that means none of this is working. The only thing that does work is Him. Get my mind and my heart off your career for a moment. Get your mind and your heart off whatever the hobby is. Get your heart fixed on Jesus Christ and Him crucified oh. and you will receive pure joy in your heart. Pure joy. In the midst of chaos and confusion in this world, was that I, I, I sent it out in, in the Scripture that song, I Choose Christ. When everything around me says give up, that's what you were talking about. It's a mess out there. What you, Lord, I just surrender to you. You got all things under control. Who else can I go to? No one. Oh, you can go to people. You can go, yes, go vote. Yes, get involved. But church, let me tell you, and I'm going to get in trouble. Washington, D.C. would not be in the shape it's in if it wasn't for the church in the shape it's in. You see, this foolishness going on in Washington, D.C. wouldn't happen 100 years ago. I'm going to tell you why. The church would have stood for it. The church would have said, okay, you want to legalize this? You want to say two men, two women, kill that child out of the womb? You want to take a child of six years old He's a boy, and all of a sudden he said, Mama, I think I'm a girl, and then you butcher that child. A hundred years ago, that would not have happened because we'd have kicked the bones out of office. We would have kicked them out. Is it happening now? Where's the church? Where are we at? Oh, the closer we get to the Lord's return, the closer, the closer we get, God is going to raise up this remnant. I believe starting right here, and there's a few other churches in this United States that God is going to call upon His children. You better cry out to me. You better look to me and me alone and what I did for you at Calvary's cross and let me fix it. Amen. Let me fix it. At least for a season. You see, it's not going to get completely fixed until the Lord comes back and pulls us out, number one. And then she's going to get fixed as we're studying on Wednesday night the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when He steps His beautiful nail-scarred feet down in Israel. Paul and the Holy Spirit in verse 18 said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, th there's sufferings right there. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, everything that, 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 that can get us down in these trials and tribulations of what we see on the blasting TV. And you're just like, all these sufferings, the cancer. I got a burden to these kids. 
you know, some of these hospitals that, you know, children, you know, little ones, cancer, I'm like, oh Lord, you can. You can. I want to see a great awakening. I want to see a revival one more time before the Lord calls His church home. And I know it's coming. Amen. I know it's coming. It has to come. Well, is it this election that, that gets people on their knees? I don't know, brothers and sisters. I don't know what it's going to take. Is it going to take a hundred more Helene uh, uh, floods that have hurt Florida? Where, where we went on vacation, places is flooded. Over 60 people have been killed and over 3 million are without power this morning in Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Eastern Tennessee. Is that what it's going to take? Well, see, the creation, it says, all of creation is groaning. Mm -hmm. See, we don't know how far we fell, Adam. We know it was perfect. God didn't make them stone. He's in control. He can stop it. But now he's allowed certain particulars to take place because of sin. Again, that's why we groan. And you see, now that these storms are raging, why are they raging? It's not right. Sin brought creation down. That's why you go to a zoo, I wouldn't advise you to jump the, the, the gate or the fence of a man-eating lion. It ain't going to turn out well. God didn't create that lion that way. They were all plant eaters. They became carnivores during the fall. When man fell, he took creation with him. Why? It said it wasn't their fault. You just read it with me. Because Adam was given dominion over them. That means you were given dominion over them. Sin has tainted this world for approximately 6,000 plus years. But glory to God, if the story ended there, oh, you think we travail and grown now? If the story ended there, oh, it would be a sad, sad story, but it doesn't. Thank God. Again, it says subject to vanity. Not willingly, that's where it was talking about the creation. The trees and flowers and, and the animals and the fish that don't act right according to God's original plan. You see, in Genesis it tells us the rose did not have thorns before the fall. It's got thorns down on it. Oh, but here we go. Because the creature itself also, in other words, all creation, verse 21, shall be delivered. Are you hearing me this morning? Shall be delivered. From what? The Bible tells us. From the bondage of corruption, in other words, mortality and death. That's what this corruption is. This corruption that I put on when I was born into this world, passed to me by Adam, is corrupted. Oh, but glory to God. The Bible tells us in the twinkling of an eye, this corruption is going to put on incorruption, and this mortality is going to put on immortality. Why? The Bible tells us again, get this in your spirit, back up to verse 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children of God, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And it says we will be glorified together. Church, there's the missing link right now. Jesus paid for it all at Calvary's cross. But we have still not experienced the full redemptive plan, meaning we're still in this mortal corrupted coil. Oh, but praise God, it's not going to end there. It's not going to end with the rapture of the church. He's going to like that, the fuss, change us, 
to a glorified body. And if you die before the rapture, your spirit soul to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And your spirit body is going up there. And when the rapture happens, you will receive your glorified body forever and ever. Somebody needs to shout in this house. Right, amen. Glory to God. The story doesn't end. The Lord didn't say, well, they're on their own. Oh, uh, that's what's wrong with man. He thinks he's on his own. Tries to do everything on his own. Instead of looking to the Creator, the one with the one pair of hands and saying, oh Lord, help us. Shall be but again, we groan and travail in pain together. But again, he speaks that we are the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Waiting for what? Verse 23. Waiting for what I just said. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. There's the, the missing part, if you will, that is yet to come. It's hope, hope in Him, but it's not, I hope it don't rain tomorrow. No, this is blessed hope, blessed assurance. The Word of God says it, it's going to happen, amen? amen? This is going to happen, church. I don't know when, but I know it's coming, and it's coming soon, I believe. But see, we're saved by hope. Even if we don't see it right now, we're saved by hope. But we do see a lot of things. You see a change in you. You just sung about it. If you don't see a change in you, you better hit this altar before you leave. I love that saying. Brother Lauren Larson says, he'll be here in the middle of this month, by the way. Him and David Borg. If you is, this is bad grammar now, if you is what you was, you ain't. If you is what you was, you ain't. Meaning, if you're still that same person before you said it, at the cross, when I first saw the light, if you're the same person today, after you've been to the cross that you were before the cross, you better get back there. Come on. Right. You better get back there. Of course, that means daily anyway, as we take up our cross daily and follow Him. I'm coming down, church. I'm coming down to it. But, verse 25, then do we with patience wait for it. We know it's coming. Jesus done paid the bill. Tet and Alesta, paid in full. It's done. I've got it in my account, if you will, because I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> it's coming. we just got a job to do until He calls us home. And I'm going to say it again. It's more souls. It is more souls. Amen. It is praying and intercession. I feel the burden for souls more, Sister Mary, than I think I ever have. Matter of fact, I know so. And that's an urgency, a quickening of the Spirit to give me a groan saying, Lord, whether it's our family, whether it's this family, whether it's people going up and down 34, wherever it may be, there is a quickening, a squeezing, if you will, a groan within me at times. And I'm like, oh, Lord, it just comes out of nowhere. And it's becoming more pronounced. And I just begin to weep. Yeah, I do weep a lot because I love Him so and I know what I used to be and I thank God I'm a brand new creation in Christ and I've got a mansion waiting on me in glory but that's not really why I'm praising Him. I'm praising Him because I get to be in His presence. Amen. That's why. That's really why. Oh, but church, there is more out there that don't know the Lord than that too. And they're groaning. That's why they act a fool. That's why you're seeing what you're seeing on your TV screens and on movies and other things out there. And you're like, oh, this is... Have you noticed the difference? Every once in a while, I'll, uh, I like looking at old commercials. 
That's what we're talking about. Maryland's law. Oh, commercials from the 1960s and 70s. And look at them today, how filthy they are compared to what they were just 30 or 40 years ago. Amen. One of the greatest, funniest commercials to me when I was growing up, you remember Madge? Palmolive? The woman would be putting her hand in dishwashing with us soap or whatever you call it, dishwashing liquid. And then she'd tell the lady what it was. Ah! It's okay. It's palm olive. See, those things to me are just silly funny. You know? But today in some of these commercials, it is disgusting what they air. Not only the language, but the nudity, the situations that they, they, they come together or they try to project uh, buy this new car but, but there's a half naked woman in front of it. What are you looking at? Buy the car of the woman. It, you, see, you see how far man has fallen. This groaning trying to do anything they can to fill that void that cannot be. So we're patient. We're patient the Bible says. We're patient because the Lord is perfect. His timing is perfect. He never makes a mistake. So that's why, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. But what would Jesus say? Thy will be done, Father. Thy will. Thy will. Not my will. Jesus said that in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but thy will be done, Father. Hello, hello, hello. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. <laughs> Again. <laughs> For we know not what we ought to pray as we ought. Verse 26. Oh, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with our groanings which cannot be uttered. There's, again, there's many times, church, you may not have realized it. You might not be praying exactly according to the will of the Father, but you're so broken. There is an overwhelming in you, you may be bitterly weeping and not saying anything. And you might not be weeping, but you're broken. That's the groan. That's what the Holy Spirit is talking about. There's a groan in there that you don't have the words to properly interpret and take to the throne room of God. But oh, the Lord is not just looking down upon us this is what is so great about our God. He created. He saved us. But not only did He save us, He gave us His instruction book. Not only did He do that, but He gave His Holy Spirit to live inside of us. Amen. What a great God we serve. That when you don't know, He does. He is making intercession on your behalf when you're broken. When it's a family matter, when it's whatever, that there's a burden placed, or it's sin in general, yes and amen. You, you watch Fox News, you watch whatever, and you're like, oh Lord, you look at this election and it looks like it is neck and neck. And I'm like, oh God, here I go, get in trouble. I cannot believe that there's 50% of this nation that can vote for one individual. That's a lie. <laughs> I hope. But how can they? How? Because they're deceived. They're deceived. They've got their, their... Let me tell you how many in the world will address things. Let me give you a few quick examples. I could. We just read together that all of creation is groaning. Amen? All right, we just saw some storms. We've seen storms. We have seen tornadoes. We have seen floods. We have seen hurricanes like crazy. A lot of damage. One group says it's global warming. It's climate change. Do your homework. We've always had them. We've always had them ever since the fall. Oh. But you see, that's filling a void in them. They're trying to say 
God ain't nothing with God. That's man-made. So they make a religion out of it. Remember what I said earlier? Money, job, and fill their time. So they're in rebellion against God. So they've got to do something to feel important that they're righteous and they're so holy and they're so smart with their PhDs and they come up with all this baloney trying to track the NOAA and others are trying to say, well, this earth is getting hotter. Well, the Lord designed it that way to go hotter and colder. Read history. There is times when this earth gets hotter and then she gets colder. But you see, they're in rebellion against God. So what they're going to do is do anything they can to fill that void. Fill that void to satisfy the longing, the loneliness, being absent away from fellowship with God. Another thing, death. They're obsessed with death other than their own, of course. In other words, see, if you don't know God, you don't know life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if you're not born again, you don't know life. I don't know life. And you certainly don't have regard for life. And they don't. Take it. A million babies a year. Take it. There's no value. It's not a baby, it's a fetus. And so, there is another area where they can feel and march in their parades and feel important. Oh, empower women! Women's rights! And then you save people that will do that. Oh, I'm making you mad now. Will say it's okay for a biological man to compete in a woman's sporting event. How stupid. You're really standing up for women's rights. Groaning. 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 As I close, again, all the creation is groaning. Get ready for it to increase. In all areas, it's going to. But let me tell you this. You hear me? I want this to sink in. If you don't remember nothing about this message, I want you to remember this. The Bible tells us where sin did abound, grace, grace, grace did much more abound. Come on, church. Where sin did abound, and sin is abounding, it's abounding for thousands of years, but God's grace covers it, washes away for all those that will say yes to Him in that remnant that church is holding back that tide of darkness right now. That's God's grace. That's His grace. And I'm so thankful that we've got a God that's full of grace, brother. Amen. You think about where you'd be without the goodness of God. I'd be dead. I'd be dead a long time ago of my foolishness. But the Bible says here, shall be delivered. Shall be delivered. And you know this is one of my favorite verses and we just have to be in this chapter so I'm going to quote it. 8.28 Romans. For all things, everything, for all things, work together for good to them who love God and are called unto His purpose. Amen? Amen. It's going to work out, church. Yeah. It's going to work out. Yeah. And got God's hands in it. I'm looking at Him. He's going to work it out, church. Yeah. You keep praying. You keep believing. You keep looking to Jesus, understanding that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And by His precious blood, by His stripes, we are healed. Oh. And I'm looking for Him oh. to come back. Oh. I'm looking, praise Him. Please come. I'm looking.
waiting for the Lord to come back. It might be some time, but I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost is going to move. He's not going to let us. This, this, I don't think the Lord's done with America. I really don't. But there's got to be a church that says, Oh God, we've got to have you now. we got to have you. We, 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 we've looked in the wrong direction, but we got to have you. The Lord honors faith. Amen. And I will tell you, during this week, things aren't going right. Let's say you got a bad news from the doctor. Let's say one of your kids is acting a fool. Let's say the boss is all over you. Let's say you stub your toe and it's hurting. Whatever the case is, you begin to praise Him. Amen. You just begin to praise Him in that situation and allow the Holy Spirit to give you that garment of praise and that spirit of heaviness to give you that oil of joy for your morning. And He'll bring peace like a river into your heart. And you don't just do it today. I mean every day. Pray without ceasing. Lord, thank you. Lord, I know it looks bad. It is bad. The preacher says this. The news says that. The doctor says this. My wife hired this way. The kids are everywhere. Whatever. Oh, but God. But God. And I will praise Him. If you need prayer, come on down. If not, I must pray. You know what to pray for. Him. But a special prayer request. It's simple. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. I must pray, Father, love. Father, you know every need in this house and the needs of people that are watching wherever in the world they may be. Oh, Holy Father, we need a move. We need a great awakening and shaking. Lord, an earthquake of the Spirit across all of us. For there is a groan in the land. There's a groan in our heart. Lord, touch. Touch this nation one more time. Oh, Lord. Touch the church one more time. Touch the family one more time. Touch the hospitals one more time. Oh,
Amen.